So deep underneath the factory in Opel and Russell time, there is quite a fantastic collection of cars. All sorts of weird and wonderful things from Opel's past is here. And we're gonna give you basically a quick look around some of them. And uh, I think you might be surprised by some of the things you see. The Fira A OPC. And this is a, basically a selection of saloons that we have here. Obviously the famous Calibra, but also the wonderful Lotus Carlton or Lotus Omega as it's known in Germany. Look at that engine, absolutely wonderful. So all of these cars are belong to Opel and uh, they're all part of the heritage fleet. So they all have all the, they're literally all perfect and they're all absolutely stock standard as they would have rolled off the production line. It's a V8 Opel Omega, which I'm sure this thing must be just phenomenal to drive. And the three liter Senator as well. Wonderful. Imagine how comfy that must be with, look at it, some tiny little wheels on it. So yeah, this is uh, from the Omega V8 from 2000. 310 horsepower. And as you can see, the all of these things are absolutely perfect. There's not even a crease in the leather like new and it even has phone inside and you can't get this on the video but the leather smell is incredible so yeah this is uh this is only the start with because there's some even more interesting stuff further along which we'll get to And there's obviously, as well as the production cars, there's uh, quite a few more unusual things and one-offs and convertibles. This is this uh, it's a better. Now, one of my favorite cars here is right behind us. It's actually a, a design study. Let's see, 1976 bitter. But it's this, it's the CD concept. Absolutely wonderful thing. It looks incredible. It's it's hard to, <laughs> you can see just how low this is compared to the wheel height of it. And that is amazing canopy that would wrap around and lift up. And as you can see, you might be able to just make out here some of the details of it. It's a 1974, 230 horsepower, phenomenal little thing. And this is actually the, another version of it. This is basically the, what it's like underneath that shell. So you can see just how elegant, even underneath the bodywork it would have been. But there's much more. <laughs> this could end up being quite a long video. But as you can see, we're just going to take a bit of a look through all the different models that they have here. And obviously there's a few of the, the sportier days with the GT, like a target top on this. It's fantastic. Obviously the Manta, big fan, or big, uh, very popular rally fans, legendary car. 
and then this this is the OS 40 from 1974 So as about this place, this is, uh, we're actually on the lower level at the moment. And you can see this is really where they're storing a lot of the cars. You have amazing things like this Corsa Spider. I, I love this thing. This is one of my favorite cars here. I just love the proportions of it. They've set it up here, configured with a single seat. But it's also got this speed hump at the back behind the driver. I think there's a real kind of such an Audi feel to this thing as well with those blistered arches. It looks super cool. Really do like this thing. Even right down to the paintwork, it's got this beautiful pearlescent paintwork. And you just see the graphics design here. And then inside you have this amazing interior. Such a a cool thing, very much of of a certain time as well. We don't see things like this anymore. Um, we'll just come over here for a moment and show you this as well. This is one of the many other concept cars that they have here. And really it's, in case you ever wondered where concept cars end up, often it's places like this. And generally this isn't open to the public, but people can, or Opal staff for example would, often take cars out of here for the design studio to maybe take another look at or look for some inspiration. Um, speaking of inspiring ideas, there's quite an interesting thing. This is called the Opal Twin. And effectively, this was obviously a, a small car. It's got a central driving position, which you probably, it's a bit hard to see with the glass, but it's a central driving position with two other seats in the back. But what makes it even more interesting was its powertrain. So you can probably see just here, just here, it's a different color. And effectively what this could do is it was able to switch between different powertrains. So you could effectively, like a cassette style, take out one and slot in something else. And I actually think this could be quite a novel idea these days. Um, yeah, very, very interesting to see. Um, but there's more, there's more to see here. For example, like this, very, very interesting kind of Calibra based car, really sleek looking. And we have a convertible Calibra. And then some of the other small ones. Obviously the Tigra came along in the 90s. And there's some various different variants. This is a this is a design study that they did for the Tigra. And beside this, a convertible version, kind of like a speedster. Which looks, I have to say, I think it still looks quite smart today. The proportions of the Tigra. You know, a lot of people would look down their nose at it, but I think it actually looks pretty cool. Now, this is really interesting. Tigra V6. Can you imagine how much fun this must have been? Uh, you can see the way the, the arches are kind of flared out a little bit at the back. And this is, this is the Tigra B study from 2001. So it's obviously got like a little bit of a camouflage design on it. And really, I guess this was going to be a future Tigra, which didn't quite happen. Um, kind of interesting to see some of the proportions. It's quite unusual looking. Um, obviously, we've got some courses, because of course is a huge model for Opal. And there's some quite wacky versions of it here. Um, Eco 3 from 1995. Some of you might remember these from various car shows and... Uh, there's obviously this quite wild thing called the Corsa Moon, which was, as you can imagine, designed to be driven on the moon, I guess. You can see it even in, I uh, don't quite know how easily you can see in through there, but it does still have brake discs and everything like else. But these uh, are kind of, kind of metal, metal wheels. 
Um, now this is not, I was just talking to the guys about this. It's an open max. Now this was a four seater versatile, basically like a smart car before the smart car came along. Never quite got beyond the stage of being concept. Um, I think this one they said has a basically had an electric forklift engine in it, but this one actually has a three cylinder engine and it had some novel features in it. As you can see, super short dimensions and it was a four seater. And you could actually turn around the this, uh, so you see here, this could lift up and allow the front seats to swivel in order to improve uh, rear access to the car. And we've much more still to go. And this is only downstairs, so there's still more to be shown. Um, this is the Concept A. And some of these concepts you can see, obviously, you know, the Aguila came along in time. And as you can see, this got a lot of influence from that. But there's also then, for example, some more quirky things like the Frogster. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure what they were thinking, but an interesting sort of pop-up design with this interior. It's folded over at the moment, but the, the seats are just popped forward. Um, but you could have this shutter system on the back that could uh, roll back. I, I, I'm pretty sure there's another set of seats in the back, but yeah um unusual now a couple of other things some more quite quirky concepts the g90 this was the g90 was effectively going to be a 90 gram per kilometer car and it had some very aerodynamic features but it also looks i think it looks kind of like a some of the more recent manches you can see it's got this dip in the roof yeah, but obviously next to that you have another um, Omega Estate V8 and some of you will remember the Signum which did reach production but this is the concept car that um, previewed that production car and so yeah some um, it's kind of a bit hard to see with all through the glass but you can see the original concept there and it didn't quite have it had an all glass roof but um as you can see it didn't have the um remember the signum it had like a roof section that you could put in uh, extra storage so uh, combo au rouge which is again a high high performance i saw this about a year ago at, at another event uh, it's basically a high performance version of the their combo uh, complete with uh, racing seats and everything else. I'm not sure quite how good the handling would be on it, but and then uh, you'll probably remember a couple of these other concept cars from years gone by. So this was the uh, Antara GTC, which was a quite a rugged looking SUV. But this, I think, this is really interesting. I think maybe a missed opportunity this is effectively an insignia coupe and even with that frozen gray paint it looks really good you can see it's got big wheels a bit like what we see on the opc and look at this i mean how rolls royce dawn is or sorry not rolls royce dawn um rolls royce wraith is this the whole d pillar section there isn't it amazing it's just I mean, if you look at it from there, it could almost be, you'd think, hmm, is that a Dawn? Or is that a, uh, sorry, not a Dawn. Is that a Rolls Royce Wraith? Quite interesting GTC concept. Another GTC is the Astra. So this was uh, previewed basically the, the road going car. As you can see, it's got some kind of unusual interior. And uh, some other more fascinating cars here. Obviously, you have this previewed the, the Adam Rocks. 
And then this is really quite a striking looking machine. This was called the Opal Parabolica. And it had a 180 horsepower, 1.6 liter engine. And yeah, it's quite an interesting thing, I have to say. And next to that is the Opal Portofino from 2010. Now this was basically a convertible Corsa, um, but it also had a very neat integrated bike rack, which probably can't take out now, but it was basically the whole rear of it opened up there. So all of this uh, from here slid out and you could put like a bike on it. I am curious to know about the name because it's called Portofino and I do wonder if Opel and Ferrari had to do some kind of deal on the name. That's definitely a question there. I'll try and find an answer to. Uh, as you can see, everything is very carefully packaged away here. Um, but yeah, there's some, some other quite unusual concepts. Just beautiful sleek looking thing here this is called the Flexstream GTE from 2010 and probably one of the most interesting things is its drag coefficient 0 0.22 uh, it could do 500 kilometers it was basically like a plug-in hybrid but it would do 60 kilometers on electric only and there's some fascinating details look at this ah, beautiful lines Beautiful lines. Face probably is uh, quite unusual looking, but very, very cool. And you know, you look at it, you think, hmm, there's nearly a little bit of Porsche Taycan in there almost. But uh, I'll show you quickly around the rear. Look at the beautiful window graphic design there. And also on the, on the, um, on the rear, the way it tapers in, and you have these great angles here on it as well. Very, very cool. So yeah. Uh, downstairs but there's plenty more to show you don't worry <laughs> so yeah this is a uh, again speedster off-road so you remember the speedster from a few years ago but they basically made a an off-road version of it with jacked up suspension and chunky tires it could be quite cool actually and you can see the bodywork on it it's a uh, it's it's this very heavily textured um you probably hear it there the bodywork that it's made out of very very unusual and the whole thing has it um very very cool bit different didn't make production funnily enough but um, it does seem to be a, a fully working has an engine in there so um, clearly it started off life as a as a production version but I'm sure somebody had a bit of fun with this over the time and uh, yeah some quite a collection of small this is the tricks from 2004 quite a nifty looking thing so this is the Downstairs section. I think you'd agree it, it looks pretty cool. Um, but there's more, don't worry. There's plenty more to see because this is quite literally only one level. And you can see there's all sorts of design models, various different things to show you through. So let's go and have a look upstairs because. There is even more upstairs. Now, right, thank you. Now, so here we are. This is upstairs. And some more classic stuff. So, well, where do we start? <laughs> Opel GT, beautiful thing. Um, obviously now Opel is part of the PSA group. We have some wonderful DS here and even an old Peugeot there's quite a an intriguing collection of things here
pričamo o satu ili satu i nama? Nega des. So you can see they even have some old design models, some quite amazing uh, one-off things. And everything in here, they, this is not for show, this is an operational workshop. Look at those guys. Um, this is an operational workshop, so they, they're constantly working on and maintaining things here. Um, so it's really, it is a, it is a working space. Um, we're just in here today for for a kind of a unique glimpse behind the scenes but you can see some of the some of the things that they have here and it's everything from engines cutaways yeah. so we'll take you through a look on some of the uh, some of the other cars that are on show here all these are being worked on here, we actually drove this last year. This is an 1899 patent motor wagon from Opel. This is possibly their oldest car that they own. And uh, it really is a, quite a fascinating thing to, to be in. Um, we got to drive it uh, last year at an event. And as you can see, there's just some, some really cool uh, details on it. So it's taken part in a few different events and different runs, as you can see. And yeah, it's fascinating, wonderful thing. Um, so much great detail there. You can see the original badges on it. And we have all of the generations of the Corsa. But here's probably some more interesting things you might like. This is one of their record cars, which I think they used to race on, uh, do attempt lands or attempt speed records with this. Uh, an Opel diesel streamliner, more or less based on the GT. And then beside this, an electric, electro Opel GT. So this is an electrified version of the GT. And even uh, if you take a look at it, you can see that even the the, the passenger seat is occupied with batteries. Thankfully, battery technology has come on a little bit more in recent years, but it's even all the aerodynamics, it's got the wheel spats, very, very cool. It's a clay model of a couple of different versions of the GT that they're obviously looking at. So you can see they did a half and half comparison. And um, this on the left is the Vauxhall version. And this is the Opel version on the right. And you can even see the difference that they had there. Um, obviously there's plenty of race cars here as well. Uh, you've got a, a Cadet GSI just there. I'm sure there's many people who had one of those on their wish list when they were younger. Um, some of these race cars have literally just finished their racing and been put straight back in here. As you can see still covered in dirt and grime. And there's quite a collection of all sorts of different things from motorcycles and bicycles to classic cars like this four cylinder Opel motorcycle. And some really quite, quite an amazing uh, collection of different things here. And some of these go back, you know, 1909, well over 100 years. And, uh, really quite fascinating to see all of these things it's a real privilege to be able to get to come in and and see all of these things as they are lined up absolutely fantastic I mean you know, there's so many different stories here you could spend you know you could do an entire video just on each of these cars um, and unfortunately time is against us today so we're we're only gonna take a quick walk around but hopefully you might enjoy what you're seeing I'd love to know get involved in the comments let me know what you think um, is there one that you have a particular favorite or maybe one that you remember as a kid growing up okay, this, this is quite wild this is Opel Capitan from 1956 a whole load of gold on it
products yeah some of these saloons are absolutely fantastic to see and GTW Geneva concept so let's see We often forget about it, but motorsport was a you know really big part of Opal's heritage over the years. They've done so much with motorsport, so it's kind of a pity to see that they're not doing as much anymore, but hopefully that will change and uh, we'll start to see some some more uh, motorsport action. They're going to have a, an electric version of their Corsa coming as a rally car, so that would be interesting to see. Hopefully we're going to be driving that in later this year so keep an eye on completecar.ie for that but yeah let's uh so although everything here you see is mostly road going there is also a motorsports section which has they've just actually recently opened and that's in here so they've got uh, various motorsport cars from its whole history which you'll probably take a trip down memory lane when you see some of these things like this amazing decra liveried opal looks fantastic looks absolutely incredible look and i remember as a kid watching this thing race and oh it's just absolutely phenomenal so cool to see and obviously a few different versions of this the calibra that was raced over the years great to see all these machines just kind of kept up close so well i mean they're literally some of these things are spotless you know they're literally kept in perfect condition in a way it's almost a shame to see them just sitting here they should be on a track they should be being used so maybe you know anyone in opal is watching let us get these things out let's get them fired up and get them back out on the road course wouldn't be wouldn't be Ger german touring cars without a jägermeister branded car so distinctive with that orange usually typically you see it on porsches but yeah look at those wheels fantastic And then we have some very different Astras as well. And even some courses. So you actually, if you look back through Complete Car, you'll probably find, I think we did a driving event in the Nürburgring, Shane did nearly sure it was with one of these courses it was a OPC race camp and uh, they effectively you know taught him not that he needs much help but improved his driving on track and the Vector as well another iconic car that I remember from watching touring car racing as a kid on TV so cool to see we do have a couple of single seaters actually over here as well I think you know whose uh, who's car that might have been. Now obviously we're now moving into the, the rally scene and again some, some quite cool cars that would have competed in various different events all over the world. And uh, yeah, it's quite nifty to see these things up close. This is a rally. This is a four-wheel drive uh, cadet rally. And then this is a Opel Cadet. This is a Group A version of the GSI, the 16-valve engine. And yeah, there's some some very very quite nifty looking things, as you can see. Let's have a look inside this. Look at these massive seats in here. Quite a basic setup inside. Everything you need for a motorsport event. Even your fuse box very easily, easy to fix there. 
Um, you might recognize the name on this. This is one of the many car one of the many opals that uh, Walter Roll raced during his fantastic career. And yeah. great to see these things are so up close and what I always love about these is when you get up close and just looking at all the patina in it and as I said earlier you can't quite get the smell but you know all these things are just absolutely fantastic to see up close really really cool um, this is one uh, another one that was actually raced by Jockey Clint another very good German driver and some more cars that uh, that Walter, uh, Mr. Roll, also raced. And then from rally cars, we go on to some of the more unusual cars. Some of these are kind of one-offs or um, maybe concept cars. You've also, this is a great car. It's a Corsa GSI, obviously. That was you know one of the hot hatches of its day. Um, again, yet another car that Herr Roll had uh, had raced. Um, but there's also some quite unusual commercial vehicles. So obviously Opel made all kinds of vehicles. Uh, it wasn't just cars, it was motorcycles and even vans and pickups. So there's everything they have here is, uh, is on display. Including, which I think is very, very cool. This is an Opel Blitz, which is uh, this amazing bus. And it's got this big huge glass roof on it uh, fantastic looking machine uh, a van basically you know would have used a similar basis to it but yeah it's absolutely wonderful thing so well kept and uh, as you can see inside some really cool features and look at that got this whole glass roof all the way up there and obviously some very period correct upholstery, which I think you'll agree, it's very smart. And yeah, obviously we've uh, got this year, there'll be an electric Corsa coming along, but you know, it's not the first electric uh, Opal that they've made. This is the Impulse one. This was a, a, an electric Cadet that they made. Now I'm not sure what the driving range is on this car but as you can see it's pretty standard inside. You have a a battery controller here on the uh, on the dashboard and then there was obviously the impulse after the impulse one came the impulse two which was uh, an estate version of the Astra and it's even got uh, this cut out clear panel on the on the bonnet so you can see inside obviously probably most people will remember the Ampera it's a, it's a more modern car it's a plug-in hybrid and um, quite ahead of its time I think um, I've actually not driven one but I'd be curious to drive drive one and see just what it's like Obviously, then there's a few other various different, uh, some various different displays that they would have had here. All these sort of technical cutaways that often feature at motor shows and events. And this is a alternative fuel version of the Atom, and then a hydrogen Gen One. So this is a Zafira-based hydrogen car. And again, some very sort of models, so which is effectively what you see here. So this is the effectively a, a platform for the running vehicle. Of, you see the hydrogen tanks in there. So we're nearly at the end of our short. Uh, well, short. We're nearly 30 minutes in, but a tour of what we have here, and and this is only some of what Opal has. There are more, but. Today we're just looking at these, um, some amazing concepts, various different design studies that they've done over the years, 
Um, some of these, you know, were a flash in the pan at a motor show and never seen again. Maybe some will come back. Maybe we'll see something like this coming back in the future as a mobility solution. And I suppose one of the best and most appreciated concepts that they've done recently, which was the Monza concept. Amazing gullwing coupe, four door, or four seat coupe, which actually went on to inspire the Insignia or the last generation Insignia. And even today, this still looks super cool. Some real nifty design elements to it. And it's great to be able to just walk around and see these things up close and see all the detail of them, which, you know, typically you don't always get to do, but yeah, it's a quick look inside the Opel Monza. So that's been a brief tour of uh, this incredible facility that Opel have here. Um, hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's been entertaining. If it has, please give us give it a thumbs up. Please like the video. Uh, we'd love to know what you think, so maybe get involved, drop in a comment below, and we'd really, really appreciate it if you subscribed to the YouTube channel, and if you hit the notification bell, you'll, you'll next time we put up another one of these videos, you'll get a notification, and you'll be able to see uh, more of them, so appreciate your time. Hope, as I said, hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching. And if you want to know more about some of these cars, head over to Complete Car. Thanks for watching.